From Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American original. For over two decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. The McLaughlin Group is brought to you by Mississippi Development Authority. Visit Mississippi.org to see what we can do for you. Issue one, bank alarm. Or is it panic? Are U.S. banks safe? Should we worry, Mr. President? I understand there's a lot of nervousness, um, and uh, but the economy's growing, uh, productivity's high, trade's up, people are working. It's not as good as we'd like, but uh, and to the extent that we find weakness, we'll move. Indy Mac. A bank network in Southern California just collapsed. The run on IndyMac started in June. Over an 11-day span, depositors withdrew $1.3 billion. IndyMac is now being investigated by the FBI for mortgage lending fraud. Question, what caused IndyMac's downfall, Pat Buchanan? Uh, the subprime mortgage thing, basically, maybe even fraud, John, they're looking into that, but it's not going to be the only bank that's going to go under. There's going to be a winnowing of these banks, and if folks got more than $100,000 in cash in any account in any bank, they probably should move it around. But, John, the problem here is the Federal Reserve has got two problems. First is it's facing inflation and a sinking dollar, which argues for tighter money. At the same time, the economy is sinking which argues for looser money. We are in a real box, this whole country is, John, and we're going to be a long time working it out, and there's going to be a lot more casualties, and among them are going to be banks. Is inflation the root problem? Inflation is one of the problems, but the housing is not inflating, it's deflating. That's one of the problems, too, John. We're getting hit from both sides. Ellen. Well, we've borrowed a lot of money from China to buy oil from Saudi Arabia, and this is a moment of truth. One bank is not, the president is right, one bank is not all that consequential, except as an indication of how heavily leveraged all these financial institutions are. This is the equivalent, really, of a worldwide margin call. We've built this daisy chain of financial institutions, and we have not built a significant chain of regulation. And I think uh, the Secretary of the Treasury, Henry Paulson, tried to start this conversation a few months ago about government regulation. Now they're in a position where they virtually have to stage a government takeover because these uh, institutions are too big to be allowed to fail. Mort, what's the view from the billionaire's nest? <laughs> <laughs> Reasonably relaxed, John, is the way I'd put it. But look, uh, I think we are faced with uh, three crises, two bubbles and one that have burst and one that is being created. The bubbles that have burst are in the financial sector, in the housing sector, which really caused the bubble to burst in the, f in the financial sector, and the bubble that's occurring is in fuel and food. So that is creating a major economic crunch for us. The headwinds are, are very, very serious. But the thing that is still the most serious is the continuing decline, the plummeting of housing prices. That's what triggered the problem with this bank. That's what's triggering the problem with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And that is a gigantic problem of billion, trillions of dollars. And that is the one that nobody knows where that bottom is, and therefore nobody knows how far this will go. The inflation, in my judgment, is not the problem. The core inflation, as they say, is under 3%. And when you have um, declining wages and declining, uh, 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 and declining expectations for people who are employed, you will not have runaway inflation or inflationary expectations. You do have it in food and fuel. That is also going to change. Clarence, is it hard for depositors to know whether or not their bank is solvent? Well, it's, there, there are about 90 under investigation right now. About five have gone under so far. But uh, the real question is, is my money safe? Uh, Pat uh, is right about, you know, if you've got over 100000 in a single deposit or I believe it's 200000 in a joint deposit or 250000 in an IRA, uh, you should diversify, move, move it around if you're, if you're not, not feeling you safe. You mean hold but, it to 100 yeah, it's it's uh, well a hundred for a single deposit. It's important uh, important to note though that in all these years, uh, uh, nobody's lost money on these accounts since the FDIC has been formed. The, the, the money's basically safe. Right. The reason why people people go lining up at the bank is because they're scared. They, they they don't have a lot of information, and so they get scared and they panic. But uh, what well, nothing to fear, but fear itself. How about that? <laughs> do you have you have liquidity to the point where you have to? mastermind dis disposing of a, yeah. a billion dollars in a, in a hundred thousand dollar account? Well, I appreciate the compliment, <laughs> but let me put it this way. 
I don't think the issue is the loss of your deposits. The FDIC has protected the deposits. Who protects the FDIC? Well, it's the, the Fed. The backup. The, the Fed. Right. The backup is the federal government. And right. credit How much do the they have government. at their disposal? Well, they have about $10 trillion of debt, but they can print as much money as they want, and therefore they can provide the money to the people who had deposits. Well, That's implicit in saving the commercial banking system. It's not there where the risk but lies. But the Fed does not come in after you exceed, one exceeds the $100,000 limit. They don't have no, to. they don't have to. That's not then their we, obligation. Then you pay a percentage of, of a dollar, like 50% on the dollar. Right. Is that but correct? That, that is not the real risk to the economy. The real risk to the economy is, and most, almost everybody in the economy can protect their deposits. The real risk to the economy is plummeting house no. prices and house well, values no, 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 that is driving no, 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 the, the financial the people in line at Indy no, Mac, no, did you not? But they will the all get their money no. back. They're no, all no, going to no, get no, their no, money let's back. Let's talk about the American people. You mentioned food and fuel. That's fine if you don't have to go anywhere and you don't have to eat. But the combined inflation was running at 13 or 14 percent. This is killing the American workers the average guy, and it's going to kill the Republican Party if it's not controlled. And it's a very serious well, problem, Mark. Right, it may not be serious you hold on for Boston one properties. minute. I just want to say the Republican Party has killed itself uh, because of the policies that has created over the last eight years. I want to show, show a, a checklist of uh, various aspects of the financial situation to make sure we've covered what we should be covering. Big time rule. Many factors are contributing to America's weak economy. Inflation up, U.S. dollar weak, housing prices declining, job market slow, energy and food prices up. Getting a loan, mostly difficult. Auto industry collapsing, U.S. airlines posting big losses. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac destabilized. Which one of those do you want to attack, Mort? Well, to my mind, the biggest single exposure now is uh, Freddie Mac and uh, Fannie Mae. I mean, you're talking about trillions of dollars of debt, which has an implicit government guarantee. Is, they it, a have a, is it a problem? You're damn right it is a problem. They got 65, a leverage of 65 to 1. They could be wiped out, and the federal the government will is, have to step in. I thought it was settled. I thought we said we'd back them up. We are. Right. We are, are. going to back them up. That's the, the problem, problem is if we do back them up, we do and back. we could cost us hundreds and hundreds of billions but, but, of dollars. Wait, wait, that's exactly the problem. But we're going to back them up. Well, the truth well, is we're going to back them up, and that's the why the problem. problem. That's why the problem is the Federal Reserve and the huge outpourings of money and a sinking American dollar worldwide. That, and that the second is thing the is the that housing is the crash, problem. which is killing these banks. And the reason we're going to back them up is because much of the debt they hold is held by the Chinese. And if the Chinese no, lose no. confidence in the American markets, then we're in no. trouble. How is that? that no, is not, no, that no. That is not the case. The, the Chinese have a very small proportion of our total debt. A very, oh. We have $10 trillion <laughs> of debt. They may have between a half a trillion and a trillion dollars, but oh. that is something that they can cash right? in at any time. What, the real problem is it wrecks our financial system, so you can't get money from the people who have money to the people who need to invest money. What? And but, we have a tremendous slowdown reason, in the financing of American business. What's the business. safest reason, thing you can uh, do with your money? Buy gold? Buy, treasury. No, treasury bills. T -bills. Treasury gold. bills. Well, but the, for gold, but the reason a, Republic, the the reason a Republican job. free market administration is basically staging yeah. what is close to a government takeover of nationalizing, uh, they're nationalizing Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac in all but name only, is because they're afraid of, 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 of the world markets losing confidence in the American markets. With all due and respect, if you want to talk about the politics collapses. of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, this was a Democratic honeypot for a long time. It was they who decided you must let us run it as a private institution and not really take the steps that you would have run it as a private institution. So that is not I a fair judgment. But there's Clarence been a Republican <laughs> Congress in charge for most of the time, and they're over Are we in recession, they have not bothered to regulate. Well, we start, I'm, not sorry, okay, those I'm not defending those institutions. I'm just saying that this is a Republican free market administration, and they are basically taking over these quasi-private they have Entities. no choice. Clarence, they recession? have no choice. Well, it certainly feels like a recession to a lot of people. The question is, you know, you know, has right. there been growth? There is not. There, uh, 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 we uh, and, and so much of this is, is a state of mind. Uh, people don't don't see uh, expansion uh, in the economy. They don't see their own lives getting better. And so you've got a, a psychological uh, recession, which uh, amounts to the same thing. Who's to blame? 
Who's to blame? Well, there's enough blame to go around, John. So? No, actually, actually uh, this, uh, there, there has been a bubble in housing uh, uh, as well. As, what about those uh, in, subprime in mortgage? Finance. No, absolutely. And, Listen, yeah. right. you know, did that trigger it, the whole it, thing? It, it was both the Democrat. No, it wasn't the only one. That, they, we had a bubble in housing. We had uh, housing that went up by nine to ten percent a year for but, the last six or seven years after being up only an average of three percent. Why? Let him finish. Let him finish. You have, finish. You have finish. bubbles it, because but, the Fed pumps money in the, and it goes somewhere. It went into housing. Oh. It's going into stocks. Right. Mm -hmm. It used to go into dot com. Right. You and want to shut down the Fed? And all, and all the, the Fed, Fed all did the a lousy, Fed. lousy job for America. They printed more money and put out more money well. than the economy could yeah. accommodate. And that's this why it goes Bernanke. into the bubble. This is Bernanke. No, 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 You're pointing Bernanke. the finger, it's Bernanke. It's not just Bernanke. It's, Bernanke. it's the maestro as well. Is it the treasurer? I mean, not the treasurer. Is it the maestro? No, it is not. Alan Greenspan as well as Bernanke. Everybody's been on a wonderful joyride, and all the fancy fellows on Wall Street and all their leverage this against that. Everything is leveraged against each other. And now one little bank falls and everybody realizes that, you know, we can no. now, as I said, a, a, the equivalent of a worldwide margin call. Will there be any prosecution? The federal government is going to have oh, to make will, good there, and they there should. There is undoubtedly fraud Ooh. in Ooh. some area, but what Ooh. happened was it wasn't just, if I may say, Wall Street. Every homeowner in America was buying homes beyond their capacity. I wouldn't and they blame were, the homeowners. Uh, well, that. I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying they had easy money. You had escalating prices in homes and that bubble is burst. Everybody money. played a role in that. Yeah. Not just people that. on Wall they, Street played a bigger role than the guy out who was buying a house in middle America. Do you remember what Phil Graham's uh, lobby for and he got legislation that permitted banks to, to, uh, to join other financial institutions? Do you remember how that was all woven together? Did that turn out to be very bad? No, it has not turned out to be bad. What, what turned out to be bad, I have to tell you, was this two, the financial world, without question, got into ridiculous leveraging. In other words, right. uh, uh, Bear Stearns had leverage of 32 to 1. Now, not as bad as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which went 65 to Why 1 in leverage, which is for possible. Yeah. We did not regulate investment banks. Why? We only regulated the financial banks. Uh, we did not guarantee We guaranteed them to save the financial system, and it was the right thing to do. Hey, more, more. what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is that this is beyond the control of the government even to do something about it. If you have Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac no. blow up, you could have a, a systemic crisis. Do you see that reason. happening more? It is possible. It I is know, possible. Yes, it is John, really you know possible. What will happen then. Is that all it is? John, low, low level possibility? Well, John, it's more. Any, I, I, any, but there, I but, want a prediction but the of how long this thing is going to last and how bad it's going to get. Well, you know I've been very bearish about this for a long time, and especially on this show. Don't go back. It's going to go on, in my judgment, for another couple of years. We're going to have Ooh, the worst recession you know since the Great oh, Depression. You know I've said that happen, over and John? over again. It'll and be the, the federal, worst and the longest. Yeah, but the Federal worst Reserve can print the money, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what's going to happen at the end, whether it's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, or whatever you want to call it. They will push the money, and that's how they're going to save Social Security, deflate the value or reduce the value of the American dollar, the way they're destroying it well, right that, now that, that, worldwide. Is that, that is an not, evil? That is no. Of course it's an evil. It's that a robbery no. of the American that people. Who tax their pay, taxpayers are underwriting the whole thing. Excuse me. No, we had, we had had me. Taxpayer Look, money. you we, guys are going to get out of it okay, Mort, but the average guy ain't me. because <laughs> his wealth you and his guys. retirement you and everything's going to be wiped out by a depreciated Clients. dollar. What's the worst case scenario? Well, I think that, that well, that's that scenario of, of like a, a, a Fannie Mae going down and all. The federal government sees these institutions as too big to fail. They're right. going to back it up. Right. And I think uh, well, because it's not just overseas investors, but it's Americans who have to have confidence in their banks right. and in the system. You mean they're going to? It's going to be backed right. up. This, now, this, this yeah. default, this the massive thing, default, is going to be spread yeah. around among the taxpayers well, in right, order yes. to carry the burden. Yeah, that's right, 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 right. But it'll work. Right. But it'll these work guys because are out there trying to because make a fast buck. Right. They made their fast buck, right. and then the bottom falls that's out, right. and we pick up the piece. Right. That's right. fraud involved, and I agree with Mark. That's right. That's exactly. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly that's what happened. How, that's, 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 that's how capitalism works. If there are profits, the guys on Wall Street get it. If there are losses, the taxpayers get it. We can't improve on that. Exit question. Is the presidential election going to pivot on the economy? This is so obvious. Uh, yes or no? Yes, it is. Yes, very obvious. Yes, it's overwhelmingly right. the number one issue. Painfully obvious. Overwhelmingly number one. When we come back, oil drilling offshore. Obama says no. McCain says yes. What do Americans say? We've provided a platform for success for some of the most respected companies in the country. We fueled their growth with a highly educated workforce and a can-do pro-business attitude. 
Just ask our newest business partner, Toyota. Visit Mississippi.org to see what we can do for you. As the world grows smaller, the ifs are now bigger than ever. If retirement savings can't keep pace with longer lives, if inflation sends the cost of employee benefits higher, for over 135 years, MetLife has provided insurance guarantees for life's many ifs. We have the experience, global resources, and vision to provide financial certainties for an uncertain world. No wonder more than two-thirds of the Fortune 500 choose us. After all, we are MetLife. Issue two, drill away. The coast is clear for offshore oil. Drilling for offshore oil has been prohibited by the federal government for 18 years. This week, George Bush lifted that 18-year ban. Now to make this oil drilling happen, Congress also must okay it. Republican Bush called on Democrats in Congress to do their part by repealing their 27-year-old ban. Failure to act is unacceptable. It's unacceptable to me and it's unacceptable to the American people. Democratic leaders can show that they have finally heard the frustrations of the American people by matching the action I've taken today, repealing the congressional ban, and passing legislation to facilitate responsible offshore exploration. President Bush is leveraging his power to politically embarrass the Democratic-controlled Congress. Democrats generally oppose making life any easier for big oil, which would benefit from offshore oil. Democrats are also typically green. So, Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi denounced Mr. Bush. The Bush plan is a hoax. It will neither reduce gas prices nor increase energy independence. It just gives millions more acres to the same companies that are sitting on nearly 68 million acres of public lands and coastal areas. U.S. coastal waters are home to 86 billion barrels of oil. 12 years of U.S. oil consumption. 67% of Americans favor offshore drilling. Question, will offshore drilling have any impact on the current price of a gallon of gasoline? I ask you, Clarence Page. I wouldn't look for it, John. You're not going to see a real impact until years down the, down the line. And, and the argument is over uh, both the oil versus uh, the scenic beauty of our coastal, of our pristine coast. Uh, that's uh, the kind of, of an issue that's going to cause a lot of arguments on Capitol Hill. The Democrats I think, are going to hold fast for the, for the, the near future. But it's, uh, the, thing, the thing about, uh, about offshore, offshore drilling uh, is that uh, it, it doesn't really uh, affect the immediate price, but it's got, it's got a real political salience. Uh, Bush comes out as being in favor of reducing the price of oil and our oil dependency. Democrats come out as being opposed to it, and he hopes Republicans... Does that salience no, have any no. impact on the market? Yes. Immediately? I doubt yes. it. No. But, 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 no, but no, I'm going to market, market here. prices are set by uh, futures, futures. futures trading. Right. Right. Futures trading mm -hmm. are affected by how they think new supply will come on or how they think demand will be dropped. If we make a serious commitment to a lot of new supply, it's bound to affect it. Yeah. Maybe not but in a week. talking a decade from now. Really, John, not, that's when the supply will come on, right. but the futures will be affected John, a lot earlier than that. Politically, yeah. it is a winner, I think, for Republicans. I think two-thirds of folks think we ought to start drilling. We do drill off Texas and off Louisiana not off Florida and not off California. And I think Pelosi and the Democrats are coming off as ideological obstructionists right. when folks have at least an idea for future supply. And to demagogue the oil companies, right. nobody believes what about, that's well, going to get don't like it either. Well, <laughs> what about the impact on OPEC? The, well, uh, OPEC, uh, OPEC's having a trouble now because, frankly, demand is falling a little bit. Right. Because prices are 147 right. and 50. So what yeah, does that lead OPEC to do? That will lead OPEC to cut back on production. Correct. Well, the, pri the price per barrel has been falling recently, but it has nothing to do with the notion that we might be drilling offshore. Drilling offshore is a chimera. Did I pronounce it chimera. right? Chimera. Chimera. Okay. I checked. I knew I wasn't going to get it right. <laughs> Mythical beast. You got the right word. Right. I got the right word. Uh, it doesn't do anything to affect the uh, oil supplies, and it also diverts us from the real challenge, which is getting off of these okay. fuels the, that we cannot sustain. On the subject and of the, Al Gore made a very good on the subject that of the real the challenge, state. the presidential contenders. Barack Obama has a problem with offshore drilling. John McCain does not. 
and thinks it should be left up to the state. Offshore drilling would not lower gas prices today. I think the federal moratorium should be lifted, but I also think that it is up to the states to make those decisions. Why the state's emphasis? Because Charlie Crist has come out for Florida, Florida governor. And Schwarzenegger has not come out for him, so McCain's still a friend of the California coast. <laughs> what's right, what's right. principally at play? Florida. Florida? Right? Well, well I, mean, I mean, votes? Yeah. Well, yeah, because California. Well, Floridians kind of don't like it because now, it's yeah. going to mess up their shorelines where right. the tourists are. Right. And when yeah. they had a Republican governor, he didn't like it either. So, right. there, right. therefore, I mean, uh, therefore McCain says. I'll, I'll play to the states on this. Yes. Well, yeah, Let the states not, decide. It's Chris. not a bad idea Look, in theory, is it? Is Chris. the theory good? Is the statecraft no. good? No, I, no, no that, it's I, not. I'm not overall. No, you're talking you want to you you have it as a federal decision? I, 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 I want to have it as a It's insane to send $150, $200 $200 billion a year to the worst people in the world because we will not produce the oil resources that we have locked up in this country, including offshore and including in Alaska. It will not happen in a day or a week. Why don't you let the states decide? It's their shoreline. It is not just their shoreline. It's a national shelf, it's issue for the United line. States. It is the something that is critical to our future to and to our economic future. against this more. Too much power is aggregated in the central I, government. I am, uh, too much power is now aggregating in, in Iran and in Venezuela and there's in also, Russia who control the oil supply. And, 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 too, and, and, yeah, we'll never get... We'll, people right. are starting to buy Priuses. Yeah. Now they're starting to turn to alternative fuels as we should have years ago. Absolutely. The definition of victory on this issue is not whether or not the ban is lifted. On that is offshore drilling, but whose position the voters like better on that basis? Who will win? McCain in the White House or Obama in the Democratic Congress? Pat Buchanan. Well, clearly, I think this is one of the few issues on which Republicans, McCain and Bush, have the superior position. As a matter of fact, McCain would not have moved to McCain this position. McCain and the White House have the better position. Yeah, McCain would not have moved to this position unless the polls showed it rising in popularity. Right. Well, Obama may be in real uh, well, trouble on no, this, true? I disagree. It's an easy yes to say, yeah, we should drill more, but the intensity is not there. The intensity is on the other side, and so politically it is not a loser for Barack Obama. Plus, he has a unique gift, actually, to be able to explain things and be reasonable, and that's part of his appeal. Sixty-seven percent of the American people want to drill offshore. Right. What it's, do you think of that? It, it, that? Those polls have been climbing. About $4 plus a gallon, people are now saying, let's produce our own oil. Sooner or later, it's going to affect the price. I think it's a definite winner for McCain, not that it's going to swing the election, because the economy is a much worse issue. I agree. This uh, single issue, it's a winner for McCain, but it's not going to swing the election because uh, oil does not sit alone as an energy source. And uh, when you've got even T. Boone Pickens now pushing wind, you know the debate is shifting. Vox Populi, 67% of the people want it. Make it happen. We'll there, be right back the with predictions. Aren't there on Capitol Hill. The McLaughlin Group is brought to you by MetLife. Guarantees for the if in life. As the world grows smaller, the ifs are now bigger than ever. If retirement savings can't keep pace with longer lives, if inflation sends the cost of employee benefits higher, for over 135 years, MetLife has provided insurance guarantees for life's many ifs. We have the experience, global resources, and vision to provide financial certainties for an uncertain world. No wonder more than two-thirds of the Fortune 500 choose us. After all, we are MetLife. We've provided a platform for success for some of the most respected companies in the country. We fueled their growth with a highly educated workforce and a can-do, pro-business attitude. Just ask our newest business partner, Toyota. Visit Mississippi.org to see what we can do for you. The Democrats will pick up five Senate seats in November, yes or no? Yes. At least. Yes. Yes. Answer yes. Bye-bye.